So how does business ownership usually work and where do employees usually fit? We're going to answer those questions in this segment, but before we do, I want to explain a few basic concepts. First is the concept of an ownership model. Every single business, whatever its legal structure, has an ownership model, meaning a structure of ownership. Let me give you a few examples you might be familiar with. A business may be owned by its owner-operator, who's often the founder. It may be owned by a family or by a small group of partners. It may be owned by outside investors. Or there may be a combination of different owners, each owning a percentage of the company. If you ask these two questions, who owns this company and what percentage of the company does each owner own, the answers to those questions will indicate its ownership model. Now, often when we talk about what percentage of a company an owner owns, we talk in terms of shares of company stock. As the slide explains, a share of a company stock is a unit of ownership. If you own one share of stock, you own one unit of ownership in that company. The percentage of shares of stock that you own determines how big a piece of the company you own. Now, let's step back and look at the economy as a whole. When we do that, we see that there are two very broad ways that companies can be owned. There are closely held approaches to ownership and there are stock market approaches to ownership. Closely held businesses are owned by specific restricted groups of people. Examples are the coffee shop on your corner or a family owned business in your town. In a closely held company, the company's stock is not freely traded. It's not freely bought and sold by the public. Again, ownership is restricted. It's limited to a person or to a group. Now, typically, traditionally, the owners in a closely held business are the individuals who have put capital at risk, those who have invested funds into the business and who, as a result, by law, are given rights to the profit of the company after its obligations have been paid. The overwhelming majority of businesses in the United States, in fact, 99% of businesses in the United States are closely held. Virtually all small and medium-sized companies, including family-owned businesses, are closely held. And you may be surprised to know that some very large corporations are closely held too. There are about 6 million closely held businesses with paid employees in existence, according to the Census Bureau. Now, on the other side of closely held companies are stock market companies, which are also known as listed or publicly traded companies. Their stocks are sold and traded on public exchanges. So anyone who buys stock in such a company can become a shareholder. Stock market companies are large. They represent just 1% of all US firms, but they employ about 70 million people or about one third of US employment in the business sector, not including jobs in the farm sector. Now let's move on to the central questions of this segment. How does business ownership usually work? And where do employees traditionally fit when it comes to business ownership? Within the traditional employment relationship, in both closely held and stock market companies, employees are hired by the employer to work in exchange for a wage or a salary. Sometimes employees are also given or have an opportunity to buy ownership shares, but more often employees do not share an ownership. When this omission happens, the ownership model leaves a key group, the workers, out. That's the way it's traditionally been done. But the traditional model of business ownership, it doesn't always achieve the employee buy-in that managers may seek, and it doesn't always achieve the sense of stakeholding that many employees would prefer. And importantly, it reproduces inequality. When profitable growing companies fail to share ownership with workers, they miss a vital opportunity. But more business leaders, employees, public officials are beginning to realize the limitations of these traditional ways of business ownership. More and more are seeking ownership approaches that are better aligned with the needs of businesses and workers today. Some employers have found ways to show employees that they are appreciated without incorporating ownership sharing 
But unless we get at the critical issue of ownership in employee-owned companies, rather than all the equity and the profits going to one person or a small group of people or to outside investors, employees become shareholders. And as owners, they have the right to benefit financially from the growth of their shares and from the income produced by their shares. And in some, but not all, types of employee ownership, employees also have certain voting rights or governance rights. Now, when 100% of a company's stock belongs to the employees, we call that a 100% employee-owned company. We call a company where 51% of stock is owned by employees a majority employee-owned company. And in other companies, employees may own a much smaller percentage of shares. For example, in stock market companies with employee ownership programs, employees will own just a tiny percentage of all of the company's shares. While it's important to know that many stock market or publicly traded companies do have employee ownership programs, and we will touch on a few examples, in this course, we will mostly be focused on how employee ownership works in closely held businesses, which again, are the vast majority of businesses in the US and the world. Who owns a business matters. It matters because owners have rights to benefit financially from their share of ownership, among other rights. Employee ownership offers one alternative to the usual ownership models. It's an alternative that shares the financial benefits and the non-financial benefits of ownership with employees. Later in this course, you'll learn what new research tells us about the workings and the impact of employee ownership. We'll also talk about what companies are best suited to employee ownership and instances when employee ownership may not be advisable. In the next video, we'll dive deeper into understanding what employee ownership really is.